The Razor language was designed specifically to create user interfaces. It allows us to combine HTML and C Sharp. HTML is the default language, and C Sharp is included with code blocks that always begin with the at sign. Although HTML is the default language for Razor files, you can sort of think of it as just another class in C Sharp. Starting with the at sign, we can tell this class what namespace it belongs to, and we can include other namespaces to reference from. We can tell it what class it might inherit from, what interfaces it might implement, and what attributes it might have. And here is a comparison of how all of that might look in your standard c -sharp file. We can open up a c -sharp code block with the at code. We will use these code blocks to declare our variables and methods. To display a variable in your HTML, use the at sign directly followed by the name of the variable. I'm going to add some style to this and let's have a look at it in game. We can use the if statement inside HTML to render things only if the given condition is true. So I'm going to create a new boolean variable here and set it to false by default. And again, everything C# -sharp here starts with the at sign. So we'll put the at sign and then it's just your regular C# -sharp if statement. In between the two brackets, you can insert your HTML. We can hook into the events of a specific element through its attributes. For example, if we want to detect when the user clicks on the Hello Razor panel, we'll start with on mouse down is equal to, and then we're calling to a C sharp function, so we'll start with the at sign followed by the name of the function. I'm going to have this function display an error just so it is obvious that it's working. I'm also going to flip that boolean that we created earlier to toggle the visibility of the Goodbye Razor panel. Let's add a few more styles, including pointer events all, that way our cursor is visible, and then we'll see how this looks in game. We can use a for each loop to iterate through a list of items and display them how we like. Open up your code block with the at sign, then your standard for each loop, and within the brackets, we will type out the HTML for how we want each item to be rendered. We can create an additional Razor component to clean up our code a little bit. So let's create a new one called playername.razor and copy and paste the code over to it. And inside of our player name component, let's give it a parameter so that we can pass the player's name to it so that it knows what to render. Parameters are defined simply by creating new properties. And now back to our for each loop, we will create this component by its name and plug a value into that parameter also by its name. If your UI displays a value that changes frequently, such as the current time, the UI system does not inherently know when that value changes and when it needs to re-render. We can give it a hint by overriding the build hash method and returning a hash code of the values that we are displaying. A hash code is simply an integer identifying the value or state of things. So if the state changes, the UI system knows it needs to update. 